Okay, hi there. Uh, this is the first in a series of videos taking a look at some of the key microeconomic diagrams for your economics papers. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the main market diagrams that you might be able to uh, use in your answers and obviously be asked to apply in short answer multiple choice questions, for example. Keywords of advice, uh, you can't just memorize a diagram and just dump it on the paper. You need to make sure your diagram contributes to analysis. So, you know, try to make reference to your diagram in the written text and make sure that the diagrams are fully developed, the lines, the areas, and then apply them dynamically to the context, to the market that you're given. Lines and diagrams need to be shifted in response to given scenarios. A new area shaded, revised, equilibrium points noted, etc. It's all part of the detail that makes a difference in your exam. So typically uh, in the market section you'll be using supply and demand theory. So make sure you understand which factors cause changes in equilibrium prices, either increases or decreases in demand or supply. In this case there's been an inward shift of market supply for coffee, leading to a contraction along the demand curve and an increase in the market price and a fall in the quantity traded. And always good to draw to the axes to show what's happened to the price and the quantity. Oftentimes students don't do that and lose marks as a result. Here's an outward shift of demand this time for coffee. Uh, the price uh, goes up from P1 to P2 in equilibrium. If the price did not rise from P1 after the shift in demand, then there would be excess demand in the market. So an outward shift of demand causes an expansion along the supply curve. Oftentimes, it's really good to develop your diagram. If you think there are two changes in the market causing a change in price, perhaps a, a change in demand and supply, then show that in one diagram. Here we see an outward shift in demand from D1 to D2, but also a fall in supply. The result is that the quantity eventually increases from Q1 to Q3, but there's a much more significant increase in the price from P1 to P3 because both factors here Demand shifting out, supply shifting inwards, both are causing the market price to go up. So don't be afraid if you think there are two changes in the market to show them both on the same diagram. Also important to understand the idea of disequilibrium in the market, situations where the price is not at the equilibrium price. Excess demand, of course, is when the quantity demanded exceeds available supply, and that's when the current market price is below the equilibrium. Typically, that results in some sort of queuing or rationing. Higher prices ration demand to those who have an ability to pay. And of course, in theory, that stimulates an expansion of supply as producers respond to the chance of higher profits, the incentive of higher profits, hopefully taking us back towards the equilibrium. Here's a situation showing excess supply, another disequilibrium where supply is greater than demand at price P2. Unsold goods are in the market, excess supply, and typically a surplus in the market puts downward pressure on the market price, causing an extension of demand, taking the market back towards equilibrium. Quite important in this section to really understand the welfare concepts. Top answers will use the concepts of consumer and producer surplus. Here we see on the left-hand side an inward shift of supply causing an increase in price from A to D and reducing consumer surplus. On the right hand side, however, an increase in demand from D to D2, causing the quantity and the price to go up and the area of consumer surplus to increase. Word of advice for the exam, when you're showing consumer surplus, better to label than shade. Better to label than shade. Shading doesn't look good, it looks scrappy. Labeling looks neat and we want our diagrams and economics to look really good. It sends a message to the examiner. Produce a surplus, of course, the difference between what the price the firm is willing and able to supply a product for and the price they actually get in the market. It's the area above the supply curve and below the price. Again, important to show areas of producer surplus. Use labels. In the first example here, there's been an outward shift of supply uh, caused by perhaps a cost-reducing innovation. On the right-hand side, demand has shifted out. Producers gain an increase there in producer surplus. Obviously, markets, you'll be talking about elasticity of demand, elasticity of supply. One of the key common questions is the link between the coefficient of price elasticity 
and the effect of a change in price on revenue. So here are two diagrams on the left hand side, fairly price elastic demand, where if we cut the price from P1 to P2 here, we lose a bit of revenue from selling at the lower price, the yellow area, but we gain a lot more the light blue area from selling a much bigger quantity. Blue area bigger than the yellow area, revenue goes up. On the right hand side, however, well, let's just take out one of those hours, don't need all of those. On the right hand side, if you cut the price from P1 to P2 here, let's bring that down a bit, too high. Cut the price from P1 to P2, you lose this area because you're losing price per unit. Uh, you only sell a little bit more. So this yellow area is bigger than the blue area. If you cut the price when demand's inelastic, your revenue goes down. Again, elasticity of supplies often asked. Beware of the context you're given. Is it an industry where basically constant cost, you can supply any amount of the product at the same price, in which case demand is perfect, supply is perfectly elastic, or is it a market with a fixed capacity like a sports stadium? So on the right hand side there where supply is fixed at the quantity S1, or are markets where supply is fairly elastic. On the left hand side here, an inward shift of demand causes price only to increase from P1 to P2. Or is it inelastic supply, maybe limited spare capacity, low stocks, for example, in which case an increase in demand from D1 to D2 causes a big increase in the market price and only a small increase in quantity. Uh, very important in your micro paper, if you get a question on this, to think about interrelated markets, how a change in supply and demand in one market can impact on a related market. It's a key exam criteria. Left hand side here, an outward shift in the supply of solar, uh, renewable energy, perhaps due to better battery technology or just economies of scale, brings the price of solar down from P1 to P2. But one consequence of that is on the right hand side, an inward shift in the market demand for coal, an interrelated market. People shifting away from coal fired energy towards renewable solar power, for example. If you get an interrelated markets question, look to use one of these double diagrams to show the connections. Keep them neat, keep them nice and clear. Here's another good example. Price volatility is often tested in the exams. Here's the price of a product. There's been an inward shift of supply causing the price to go up. Demand's fairly inelastic. Or it could be an increase in demand when supply is inelastic. Both of these factors here cause volatile price changes. Adverse supply shocks, speculative demand on the right hand side. So basically in this section of the course you need to be using your supply and demand theory, you need to be using consumer and producer surplus and you need to be using differences or changes in or importance of elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply. If you can get that right you'll score heavily on market questions.